So with Windows 11 right around the corner and soon to be replacement of Windows 10, there's many users out there which are still trying to get Windows 11 onto their unsupported hardware. So maybe you've got an older machine which just doesn't quite meet the minimum requirements, which is gonna be like many millions of people out there trying to do this upgrade. Now, obviously the only sort of risk to upgrading to Windows 11 on unsupported hardware is that your computer won't be supported by Microsoft with important security updates as Microsoft have recently announced that they could pull the rug on those updates at any point. But obviously many users still want to get Windows 11 onto their machines. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do exactly that and the easiest way possible using some software called Flyby 11. Now Flyby 11 is some free software that you can download via GitHub. And again, all the links throughout the video will be down in the description box down below. So without further ado, let's roll the intro and jump straight into the video. So as you can see, we're now back on our Windows 10 desktop. Now, before you do go ahead, I do recommend that you do make sure that all of your files, data, and possibly even the system, if you can, is always backed up. So just in case anything does go wrong. Obviously, I don't take any responsibility for anything going wrong with your system, but obviously I always advise that you do take a backup just in case anything does critically happen during the process. So what we're going to do first is, again, we'll just show you, if we go jump over to Microsoft's website here, as you can see, this is actually the system requirements for Windows 11 at present. So obviously it requires one gigahertz or faster, four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigs of storage, which in today's standards is still fairly basic. But obviously the only thing that most people or old systems won't have is where it says here is the trusted platform module or TPM 2.0. Now, obviously, a lot of users are going to be doing this upgrade because Microsoft has announced, as you can see right at the top of their site, which says Windows 10 will no longer receive support or free software updates starting the 14th of October 2025. Now, I am due to release a video on this shortly on what this exactly means. But again, when I do release this, I'll pop a link for that down in the description box down below. And obviously, I have also previously made videos on how to upgrade to Windows 11 via unsupported hardware. But again, those are using slightly more advanced methods. So today we're going to be looking at quite a simple method uh, on how you can actually upgrade to Windows 11. Now, obviously the first thing you can also do is you can also jump over to, again, this link here, again, all links are down in the description box down below. And this is how you can check to see if your device meets the Windows 11 system requirements, especially after changing device hardware. But if we scroll down here, uh, you can see there's a download the PC Health Check app. So I've already downloaded that. So if I just go into the PC Health Check app here, you'll then be granted with this, asking you just to set up. So if we just click on that and then click on install, you'll just copy a few files and then you can then go ahead and open up the application here. And this app will actually check your system and tell you exactly what it is as to why you can't upgrade to Windows 11. So if we just click on where it says check now, click on this right here. And as you can see, this system don't, doesn't actually have TPM 2.0 enabled. So it's not actually eligible to upgrade to Windows 11. But thanks to the software called Flyby 11, I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can do this in the next step of the video. So let's now jump over to that section of the video. Okay, so what we need to now first do is we need to actually download an official Windows 11 ISO image. So the easiest way to do that, again, the link will be down in the description box down below, is if we just go to our browser here, and I've already got the site open, you'll be then brought to this page here, which is the official download Windows 11 page provided by Microsoft. And as you can see, they offer you three different ways of doing it. So you've got via the installation assistant, you can create a Windows 11 installation media, but the easy way we're going to be focusing on is this one here where it says download the Windows 11 disk image ISO for X64 devices. Obviously, they do offer a ARM64 version if you are running ARM, but I'm not going to be covering that in today's video. This is only if you are using X64 architecture on your CPU. Now, if we just click on where it says select download right here and go to Windows 11, click on download, and then this will then just quickly validate the request. And it's then going to ask you to select the product language. Now, in I normally recommend using English International because I've always used that and it's worked fine. But if we just click on English International, click on Confirm. So after you've actually now downloaded the Windows 11 ISO file, what we're going to do is if we just minimize out of this window here, go into our File Explorer, go into Downloads, and you'll then have your Windows ISO download file right here. Now, what we need to do is if we just drag and drop this onto our desktop just over here for now, and then what we're now going to do is we're going to jump onto a GitHub site, which is the Flyby 11 software, which I previously mentioned at the start of the video. But again, all the links for it will be down in the description box down below. So please go ahead and click on those links right now. Once you clicked on those links, it will then take you to this page here, which is a GitHub site. So again, this is a script which is made by the team called Flyby 11. 
Um, and as you can see, it's Windows 11 for all, no specs, no problem. And as it says, Flyby 11 is a simple patch that removes the annoying restrictions, preventing you from installing Windows 11 24H2 onto unsupported hardware. Got an old PC, no TPM, which in our case we don't, no, no secure boot or your processor isn't supported. Flyby 11 lets you install Windows 11 24H2 anyway. So perfect, this is exactly what we're looking for. So the way to get this is if we just jump onto where it says releases down here, click on this, and it will then take you to this page here. And obviously you can have a quick read through all of it. It tells you exactly what it does, and obviously the way it does it. And again, if you wanna look at the scripts that it run, if you're a bit unsure, obviously you wanna double check the scripts. Again, you can see all that on this GitHub site here as well. So if we just scroll down a little bit here, and we just scroll down to this section here, you'll see there is a flyby11.exe. Click on this, and then this will then just quickly download. Now, it will give you a bit of a warning. It's just because, again, it's not recognized software officially, but don't worry, it is safe. And obviously, I would never advise you guys to download unsafe software. So we just click on the little dots here, and then click on Keep, and it will then ask you if you make sure that you trust before you open it. Obviously, we do. So we just click on Show More, and then click on Keep Anyway. Give that a second to download, and there we go. So if we now just minimize out of here, and then just, again, go back to our File Explorer and then jump into our downloads. We've obviously got this Flyby 11 software right here. So if we now just drag this over next to our ISO image. Now, before you do go ahead and begin using Flyby 11, I do recommend that you do actually check Windows 10 for the latest updates. And you can do that just by going down to the Start menu, the bottom left, go into the Settings right here, going into Windows Update, and then clicking on Check for Updates, which will be right here. I'm currently just doing a couple of updates, that's why the option isn't showing, but just make sure that you do update your Windows 10 to the latest updates possible before doing this upgrade. What we're now going to do is just going to double click on the Flyby 11 application, and it will then be brought up with this window here. If you are brought up with a user account control, again, that's a standard procedure, just click on yes, and it will obviously open the software like so. Now, as you can see, we've got two sections of the software. So on the left-hand side, it says drag and drop the Windows 11 ISO to patch it and install on unsupported hardware, also known as an in-place upgrade. And obviously, if you've got on the right-hand side here, you can see there's some common Q&As, which you might want to just have a quick read through if you are unsure about anything about this software or even throughout the upgrade. Again, all the questions should be answered in this Q&A. But if you are unsure on something, feel free to leave a comment down in the section box down below, and I'll see if I can get back to you and help you out. Now, what we need to do is, if we just move this window right here, we just now need to drop our ISO image, which we've got on our desktop, right into this nice blue square here. So if we just go ahead and do that and just drag and drop, it will then say mounting the ISO file, hang tight, give that a second, and it will then ask you if you want to run a PowerShell command. Again, just click on yes right here, and that will then begin running a PowerShell command, which allows you to bypass the upgrade. So as you can see right now, just behind here, it just shows you here, it says Windows 11 installation can now proceed. Please follow the instructions in the setup windows. That's perfect. So we just click on OK to that. And if we then just bring this window back up to where we're looking at, you'll then be brought with an installation window which says install Windows Server. Now, don't worry. This is exactly how it should how it should be. It just says Windows Server because this is the method it's actually using to get past the 24H2 system requirements. So don't be spooked by that. It's all completely normal. Now, I would imagine at some point, Microsoft will probably patch this or change the way this actually installs. Again, this is just a bit of a bypass for systems that can't install this. So if, if again, if this does change in the future, unfortunately, again, as I said, Microsoft could change it at any point. So what we're going to do now is just click on Next right here. And it's just going to quickly check for updates. So it's just going to see if there's any updates it can download before it does install this version of Windows 11 24H2. So I'm just going to let this process this, and I'll be back with you in just a sec. Once it's begun doing the updates, it will then say check in your PC, and it will bring you right to this screen here. So it's going to ask you to accept the notices and license terms. Feel free to read through them if you wish, but obviously most people don't. So you can just click on accept down right here in the bottom right corner. Now this is the important part because it's now going to ask you if you want to keep your files, settings and apps, keep personal files only, or if you don't want to keep anything at all. Now if you are doing an in-place upgrade, the main purpose for that is because you want to keep everything on your system, like your files and applications. But if you are looking to do a fresh install and you don't want to keep anything that is currently on your system, obviously just go to no, nothing. If you want to keep maybe just personal files and documents like spreadsheets, um, you know, Excel documents, PowerPoints, etc., then again, click on keep personal files only. Or if you want to keep everything, like how your system exactly is set up, all the settings, everything, then just go ahead and do the top one. So I'm just going to leave it with keep file settings and apps, and we're just going to proceed from here. So if we now just click on next, it's going to take a second here. So now I'm going to say making sure you're ready to install. 
And it's going to do a quick check again just to make sure if there's any, is any updates before it does install. So I'm going to let that proceed now, which may take a couple of minutes, and I'll be back with you guys in just a second. So once it's actually then checked for updates, it's then going to ask and make sure you are ready to install the software. So again, this will take a couple of minutes, and it will then proceed on to making sure your PC has enough space to install the Windows 11 upgrade as well. Okay, so now you can see it says ready to install. You won't be able to use your PC during installation. Save and close your files before you begin. So if you do have any programs or any software open at this stage, please obviously make sure you do just close them. So as you can see in the background, we've got the Flyby 11 upgrade assistant but i'm going to leave that running just because that is still running with this setup window so as you can see it's now it says install windows 11 pro and you then got keep file settings and apps so obviously it has changed from server to 11 pro so just to clarify it is installing windows 11 pro and it's not installing windows server it just says server again just to clarify just because it is using that method to install and bypass the system requirements so now we're just going to go click and click on install just right in the bottom corner and it will then bring up this full screen window and it will say Win installing Windows Server. But again, don't worry, it is installing Windows 11 Pro. So it's going to take a couple of minutes or maybe a maybe up to an hour. It depends on also your PC specs and hardware. So to give that a bit of time, it may reboot a couple of times as well. So I'm going to let this process and I'll be back with you guys in just a sec. So once your device has restarted a few times, you'll then be brought to this screen here and it will say, hi, getting things ready for you. All this is doing is just simply installing a few services and software in the background. Uh, and it'll also be just getting Windows ready for you. So again, this will take a few more minutes depending on your specs of your PC and how fast it is. But again, you're nearly there. So again, I'll be back in just a second once this is completed. Okay, and as you can see, we're now back on our Windows 11 desktop and that's it and it's all installed. So you now are going to be running the latest version of Windows 11, which is 11, Windows 11 24 H2. And obviously, as I said earlier in the video, it's not really recommended to run this on unsupported hardware. But if you do want to run it, obviously, the option is up to you if you do want to do it. Now, as I said, Microsoft can pull the rug on security updates, which they've mentioned they may possibly do in the future. So that is one thing just to keep sort of aware of. If that does happen, obviously, you know, you may need to then either revert back to Windows 10 or just go out and buy a new PC. Uh, which does officially support Windows 11. Now, what you can do after you've done this, again, you can just delete those two files there now because you won't need this. So flyby 11 and 24H2 ISO file. But again, just to clarify, if you do run into any issues, then obviously, again, I won't, I don't take any responsibility. Again, this is just a bit of an advisory if you are looking to get onto Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. But hopefully that's helped you guys out there. If it has, please smash that like button to help get this video into the YouTube algorithm. Please also hit the subscribe button as well as it really helps me out supporting the channel. And you can also leave a comment of what you think down in the comment section down below. And if you do obviously have any questions, please also pop them down there as well. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. I've also launched a Discord server. So if you want to join that, guys, I've also popped the link down in the description box down below. And I've soon also got some forums coming and I'm going to be launching a website as well, which will be on matthewstechhub.com. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you then. Bye for now.